Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today is going to be part 3, I believe, of my uh, Commander the Great War Let's Play series. As you can see here, it is October of 1914, we're almost into winter, hopefully the season changing doesn't hinder our offensive operations. We've turned the French flank, we uh, didn't get as rapid a success as historically occurred, where the Germans got probably right around here uh, along the Marne River where the French launched a counterattack into two German armies flanks and drove them back oh, we're right around here um, but we have successfully taken Calais we've overrun all of Belgium which didn't happen historically and uh, we have the enemy flank turned we've got a unit here along the coast with no enemy units in front of it they probably got a garrison in Rowan and I'm certain they have some troops around Paris but uh, things are looking relatively okay you know those that could definitely change Change quickly, but at the moment uh, we just destroyed a full size, you know, an infantry unit as opposed to a garrison a unit of French soldiers right around here. Uh, I believe this troop is safe from bombardment because of the port being here. I don't think you can bombard through a port. I could be wrong, but I don't believe you can. Uh, the British have had two of their full-size infantry units destroyed in the channel by a uh, aggressive uh, move by using the German Hoshi flotilla, and I was able to get it out basically unscathed after destroying two entire British armies in the uh, channel before they ever got to the coast. That's have had a lot to do with my success so far. Um, they do have another unit coming in here. It's a garrison unit. I've had to pull the fleet out because the British deployed their high seas fleet or the Grand Fleet, um, and I've got my own fleet here uh, about to go to war with the Russians in the Baltic. Uh, meanwhile, on the Eastern Front, Eastern Prussia was seriously threatened and the Russians nearly overwhelmed it, but we did just launch a successful counterattack, destroying several Russian units and driving them back toward Warsaw uh, along the, the starting borders. Uh, the Austrians are up against uh, renewed Russian attention. They've started shifting their force south. With the German counterattack, it's possible the Russians will shift troops back north, but at the moment things are okay. Although, again, that can change very quickly because we've only got two full-size units there uh, toward the Krakow area. Uh, meanwhile, in the south in Serbia, things are a bloody mess uh, with me seemingly losing lots and lots of troops. They have got a ton of infantry units versus just garrisons. You know, there's four full-size infantry units there. Um, and they keep destroying my armies, so that's not cool. Um, so yeah, the Serbians are, are being a pain just like they were historically. But uh, what I was getting into before the last video ended, and I know I cut off mid-turn, was a sea battle between the Russians here and the Germans, which I'm about to launch um, as I bring in my fleet. Hopefully I can have some success. I don't know the name of this island, but I believe there was a historic battle fought around it. Uh, the German Navy didn't fight in a whole lot of operations against the... Um, against the the Russians but they did have a few engagements and uh, in general they they won a battle it was either for this island or a couple of islands out here where they actually took over an island which allowed them to gain pretty much undisputed control of the Baltic um, and yeah um, so that's kind of what we're recreating here um, the British ships in general seem to be much better than the Germans on a one-to-one -one scale uh, the Russians seem to be about even, which I'm not sure if that's accurate. You know, the German Navy had pretty darn good warships around this time. The British, in general, may have had some better designs. The Queen Elizabeth, for example, uh, certainly superior to what the Germans uh, could bring to bear. But uh, in general, the, the German designs were pretty darn good. Um, and, you know, they had the second most modern fleet, second largest fleet in the world at the time the war started. Um, so I, I, I don't know, it kind of bugs me a little bit. I feel like we should not be behind, we should not be on par with the Russians Navy-wise, technology speaking. So as you can see here, most of my troops in the West have already been used up this turn. I used those in the last video, um, but I do still have my Zeppelin there that I can launch, um, and did no damage, but I attempted to bomb the uh, enemy Enemy transports there. I don't think I've got my... Sub oh, I still have my submarine over here, but... Oh, I've already used it. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I don't know if I've done anything down here yet. Doesn't look like it. Um, so my troops keep getting battered by the uh, Serbians here. I'm gonna I try and pull my cavalry out, but they look like they're somewhat trapped. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna kind of have to reinforce them here. And these infantry guys. And these infantry guys. And these infantry guys. Um... 
Now I've got some fresh infantry here. I, I believe this yellow here means they're either suppressed or they just got off a train, so they're not going to fight as effectively. So I am going to advance this full-size infantry unit against the Serbs here. And you can see we destroyed the Serbians there, so that was a good good result. Hopefully the Serbian counterattack from these two units doesn't overwhelm my own. Um... You can see the French have brought in their own warships here. It's going to prevent me from really being able to bombard Cutaro, which is an Austrian city, which I lost of my own stupidity. Uh, I just kind of kind of pulled guys out without really realizing what I was doing. Um, so what do I want to do? Survey. We've got... We've got ammo, but I don't want to just waste it. That's one of those things with this game, is that you only have a certain amount of artillery ammunition. So I'm going to move my artillery over here. That way it can attack either here or Belgrade, uh, which is the Serbian capital. Um, Germany, we're going to do some production here before the turn ends. Germany has 76 industrial points to use. I'm going to use that toward research. I want to increase my research for the Germans. I'm not going to put it into artillery or naval technology right now. What I am going to put it into is uh, infantry research or ground technology. So you can see there it took, uh, took some IPs, if you will, um, but now we have two points focused on infantry to kind of give that a little bit more of an emphasis. The Austrians, I don't believe we have enough money to do anything there yet. We are working on industrial warfare, which will get us a better defense. Um, so in addition to that, we've got some 30, 30 points left that we can go ahead and buy an infantry unit uh, for both sides, and then we'll call it a turn. And end of turn. Going to turn 10. We're into fall, well into fall of 1914 here. Lots of naval movements around the Mediterranean so far. The Austrians actually had a pretty respectable fleet in the Adriatic Sea, but not uh, comparable to the French, certainly not able to break out against the French Navy. Uh, but they had some of the more modern ships. I think they were the first, either they or the Italians were the first Navy to have a triple turreted uh, battleship with three big, you know, three big 14, 15 inch guns on a single turret. You can see here the enemy is thinking about what they want to do here on the Western Front. Didn't look like they did anything, that's interesting. The Serbs are launching some counterattacks there against us. The cavalry is moving against Timmersburg or whatever the heck that place is called. Um, yeah, so we'll see what the Russians do in eastern Prussia. We'll see if they go back on the offensive. Or maybe against the Austrians. Crap, they took Krakow. I was hoping they wouldn't see that that city was totally undefended. Darn it. I don't know what just happened, because whatever just happened, happened too quickly. But something just happened. Air research is now available. Paris taxis. French authorities have commandeered hundreds of Parisian taxicabs to transport French reserve infantry troops to the front lines. These vehicles provide a temporary boost in French transport capacity. And Turkey goes to war on our side. Good. So we now have the Turks on our side. Let's see here. So the French didn't close... Oh, crap. The British landed troops in Calais. Uh, I mean, they're going to be dead, but it's a distraction that I can't really afford. Alright, we're going to use our Zeppelins to bombard them. So that took out one. Okay. Can this guy go here? What about him? No. So we retook Calais. We can swing this guy around, around the flank. So we retook Calais from the British and destroyed another enemy unit with limited casualties. And now what are we going to do? These French guys don't look like they're entrenched. And they're not. Um, hmm. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. Do I want to attack their core unit there? I can launch two attacks against it. 
but I could reuse that time to reinforce this unit. So I think I'm going to do that. That's a risk. Again, launching attacks is good. If you can push the enemy back, you can prevent them from entrenching. But I think I'm going to focus my attacks here against Joffre, because I can launch an artillery bombardment against him, and he's in the open. And that's very good. I mean, losing four, uh, losing six casualties and only inflicting, what, two on us? That's a good result. I'll take that. And then the French only have a core unit here. I guess that's just kind of a pinning them in place type attack. So we'll go ahead and reinforce this guy. And so we took Calais again. Um, they're going to have to bring more troops in here. And we destroyed the one British troop that they brought in. So that's a good result here on the Western Front this turn as we, we head into... October might have been when the Battle of the Marne was. I'm not really sure. I don't... I'm not as knowledgeable in the um, in World War One as I am in the American Civil War, for example. Um, I know quite a bit about the American Civil War. I don't know a whole lot about World War One. I. I mean, I know probably more than the average person, but uh, I'm certainly not an expert in the field. We're still pursuing the Russians as they attempt to pull their fleet out. So you can see here now that their battleship is weaker, we can inflict damage on it with our cruisers. And that silly British submarine just tell me got itself. Oh, he didn't get himself sunk. Lame. Um, we must have more cruisers somewhere. Can you reach? No. I'm keeping one cruiser here just to kind of block the passageway in my own mind anyway. Um, to to the Baltic Sea and try and protect our own interests there. I'm keeping this one unit here. It could de redeploy elsewhere, but I don't, I want to keep a reserve here in case the French decide to go on the offensive. And again, Joffre, the F French army, uh, suffering six losses is very good for us. We've also got some troops ready to deploy, so I'm not sure where I'm going to put them yet. Meanwhile, we did lose Krakow, which is annoying. Germans can't quite get down there to help. We're slowly starting to kind of start invading. Um oh, I didn't want to do that. mainland proper of Russia. Well, I guess it's really Poland. Polish people would be upset if you called Warsaw Poland, or Russia. But uh, for a long time, it was part of the Russian Empire. Um, reinforce these guys. These guys and these guys. I think I'm just mostly done with this turn. Um, I wonder if it would be... These guys all haven't moved yet, right? Belgrade's only held by a garrison. It's an intriguing idea. I don't think I could destroy them, though. I don't think I'm strong enough for that. But what if... If I pull these guys back, because they need a break. So we'll pull them back. Move him over here. Can any of these army units get in there? They might be able to... This is intriguing. Intriguing. I don't think I can do them. I don't think the math adds up. Let's hear it. Let's try this. We're going to launch fighters first. I got some recommendations um, from some people who have commented on my first video here. So always launch fighters first, then your artillery. But only attack if you're certain you will win. I'm not certain I will win. I am certain I will lose it next turn, but taking their capital will take out almost, well, nine of their industrial points, which is a huge percentage of Serbia, so it's going to really hurt their ability to replace their losses here. Granted, I might lose more in the counterattack than I gain in the attack. I don't, 
know if I'm going to be able to take this city. Now. Yeah, I'm going to lose it next turn, but I just took Bel... Isn't Belgrade their capital? Or is it Skopki? Maybe it's Skopki, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that was good. Pull this guy back. Swing this guy around. Move him. I don't think there's any point in attacking there. I won't, I won't win. But we can reinforce everyone there. Do I have more, do I have any ready reinforcements here? And yeah, so Belgrade is three entrenchment. It is their. It does say it's their capital, but I guess they've got another capital down here in Skopje or whatever it's called, which makes sense when you're right on the border. You're probably gonna want more than one, more than one capital. <laughs> I thought I remember reading something about Seoul or South Korea making a new capital. Pretty sure it was a joke. Might have been in the Onion. Um, production ready. Yeah, so we can bring this guy in near Sarajevo. We'll have another infantry unit there. So we took Belgrade. Hooray! We're going to lose it next turn. Oh, but it might bloody them a little bit in their counterattack. Um, maybe it'll make the Serbians do something stupid. It feels like the Serbians are the best, um... The best AI in this game. I don't think each country has its own AI, but it certainly feels like the Serbians do. Alright, so on the western front, do we have anything that can still reinforce? New. No. New. No. Uh, we can reinforce these guys. And east. I wonder if that'll help the national morale. I don't know why I didn't... I should have gotten some kind of notice. I mean, come on, I just took Serbia. Or I just took... Um, whatever you want to call it. The capital of Serbia. So, Belgrade, come on. Give me something. Um, I'm kind of tempted to pull this unit out. Or some unit here or something. I don't know if I can do it. I want to get more regular infantry units to the north. I guess we'll put this guy here. I don't think he can move now that he's placed. And then we really need another unit in the east. I hate that I'm, you know, diverting so many troops to the east, but... The Russians are just an endless steamroller of manpower that never seems to die. Research... Austria's got one on everything. Germany's got one on everything. Two on the hand grenades. Turkey's in the war now. I forgot about them. Um, we'll give them a focus of industrial warfare. Production. I guess we'll just kind of keep, keep purchasing infantry. They're going to be the best thing for me right now, I think. At least until the, the war dies down, but... Not dies down, but until the war goes away from the mobile stage. Meanwhile, now that Turkey's in the war, let's get to work building up our defenses. I don't want to launch an offensive into Egypt. I don't think I've got the manpower for that. I don't really know. But I just have a feeling that the British probably are way better than me, because historically the Ottomans didn't do that. Um, or they tried, I think, but they failed pretty miserably. So... Hopefully we can just start entrenching here and maybe invite a unit in here to get itself destroyed and uh, maybe like a little salient. Other than that, I think that's all I'm going to do with the Turks. I want to leave these guys at Gallipoli, leave these other guys here, make sure that they don't have an easy move to the capital. I hate leaving a whole full-size unit here, but I'd rather not, you know, risk it. So that's going to do it for October. All right, uh, or for October 29th. Moving on to turn 11. AI turn. Please wait. Turn in progress. The Allied fleet is coming into the Adriatic. Lovely. <sighs> I 
I think I saw someone in the Steam comments say, say that it takes 10 minutes per turn of the AI, which, that's ridiculous. That, And they were kind of criticizing the game for it, but, I mean, you're watching the game here. If you see it, if you, you're watching this here, you can obviously see that um, the AI moves and thinks much quicker than that. So, whatever they had, bad experience or whatever it might have been, um, you know, the AI reacts pretty quick. So here's going to come the inevitable Serbian counterattack against Belgrade to try and retake their capital. Looks like it opened with a destruction of my cavalry unit there, which personally fine, whatever. It didn't seem to be all that useful. Um, kind of surprised they drew those units off to take Teschenberg or whatever the heck that city name was, though. And they relocated their artillery. So the Serbians did not attempt to retake Belgrade. That's interesting. I think it's dumb. But I'm not going to complain. And what are the Russians going to do? I think the French already went also. Kind of surprised they didn't really do more. <sighs> Lame. More Russian armies. There's just so many of them. I gotta use that sub in the Mediterranean. I keep forgetting it's there. Germany has pretty high national morale still at 124. They've been doing pretty well. Admiral von Scheer. We'll put him here. Admiral Scheer was the commander of the German Navy at the Battle of Jutland. Um, really great commander. And we destroyed the Russian battle fleet, so that gives us a huge boost in terms of morale, um, or at least a huge hit to the Russians. Maybe it doesn't boost us all that much, but it certainly hurts the Russians. So we're going to pull that core unit out. I don't, I don't want it to just get destroyed for the sake of it. I'm not going to reinforce Hindenburg quite yet. I might need him to do something. I do have enough artillery for two bombardments, but I don't know if that's the route I want to go. We'll launch our air unit here first, which got intercepted. Then... We'll go ahead and launch this infantry unit. Ah, my gamble failed. It did not have enough to destroy the enemy. Then pull my artillery back around. I was hoping I didn't have to, you know, use artillery there and, and win a victory. I didn't as it so happens. So I'm going to maybe try avoiding attacking Krakow directly, because they are cut off now, they're surrounded. Which I think will make them lose one per turn if I don't do anything. You know, I'm going to swing this infantry... kind of this direction. Just kind of trying to protect these armies' flanks here. Eastern Front looks relatively stable. I'm surprised the Serbians didn't go after Belgrade more aggressively. Um, and pleased at the same time. We've got a couple of units ready here. I think the Austrian unit needs to deploy here to kind of block the road toward Diebrecken or whatever that's pronounced as. I'll keep these guys removed from the front. We did lose one cavalry unit, but I'm not too worried. There's an enemy unit here that's exposed and not entrenched at all. So I'd like to go for it. it. Must have pretty good terrain though. Rough, yeah. Um, I wish artillery could move and attack. That'd be real nice. Again, just trying to kind of regroup here. We've taken Belgrade, so that's a it's a big boost to us. It doesn't defeat the Serbs, but it definitely deals them a blow. Knocks nine industrial points out. That leaves them with only 11, 13 per turn. And they've got Centimary or whatever that is, so maybe 15 per turn. Also, it's already starting to produce points for us, too. I don't know if I want to risk an attack on this core unit. I mean, I could probably destroy it, but 
or maybe not destroy it. I could probably cripple it. I think I'll wait. I'll wait till next turn. We'll see what the situation is then. Is everyone reinforced. We'll go ahead and do that. I don't have I don't have the industrial capacity. No. Hmm. Oh well, at least I got these guys. They're the most important. They're in the open. They're in the forest. I got everyone that I can. Um, what about in the east for the Germans? Well, I could use von Hindenburg, but it's going to risk him getting attacked. I don't know if a enemy core unit or an enemy. I think reinforcing von Hindenburg's worth more than a Russian core unit. They've got so many units. Not core. I keep saying core. I know they're not core units. Meanwhile, back to the Western Front. Um, first things first. Let's reinforce that guy. So, what do we want to do? I don't know if there's anyone here. There probably is. I doubt they've got an open road to Paris. Apparently there is no one there. Interesting. Very interesting. So we're going to kind of shift the whole line north. Bring in that regular unit there. Swing this garrison into Brussels to provide some reinforcements in the north. Um, I can't launch an artillery battery or barrage on these guys, but I can drop the Zeppelin pain. Nice. Okay. So then we can do this. I could advance and take that, but then I would open up a hole in my own lines. But that's a heavily entrenched territory, so I need to do it. We'll rail, we'll rail these soldiers north, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. What should I do? What should I do? Yeah, we'll do that. I don't know if that's the right move. Ooh, I can fill the gap with that. There we go. We destroyed a French main line unit. And um, it had a French uh, officer in it. So I could swing this down to the south, which would threaten enveloping the French line. Kind of reminds me of the historical German decision to kind of swing the armies to try and envelop the French main defensive line in front of France. But that would take me away from my goal of Paris. Wasted the opportunity. I don't think I can do it anymore. Be really tempting to attack this unit and try and open up another hole, but I don't think I can do that. So my best bet's probably just to reinforce these guys because I'm going to need them when the French bring in their reinforcements, which will inevitably happen. Um, the nice thing is I took that French officer out of the war as well for several turns. So we're kind of massing here for a drive on Paris. I don't think I'll get there. I mean, there's three hexes here to fill, but they probably have a few reserves. Um, and since I just got some units that could be deployed, I'm sure they will too. I think that pretty much does it for the turn, though. Move some of these ships into, into German ports. 
they can start rebuilding them. I think I'm going to hold off on building anything this turn. I don't have enough for the Germans to build any army units, and I don't want to just waste it on a garrison. So maybe I can just save it and use it for something more useful. Um, the Turks probably could use a full infantry... Uh, I keep saying full. I don't know why. I think the Turks should probably get an infantry unit. So we'll do that for them. Austrians don't have any manpower left anyway. And move this cavalry here. We'll move these guys in as kind of a reserve. Yeah, so I think we're just about good here. Um, that's going to be the end of this turn. I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video after this turn, though. So we'll, we'll let the allies do what they want, and then we'll go ahead and end this video. It's getting about that time. And again, I forgot about my sub in the Adriatic. Brilliant. <sighs> Austrians could really use some more artillery, so I think I might have to invest in that. Right now I don't have the manpower. Or the well not the manpower, I don't have the industrial capacity. See here what the French do. They gotta do something, because we'll be at the gates of Paris if they don't throw some troops in front of us. They'll probably launch a counterattack, if I would guess, if they've got troops there. Yep, they're using their fighters to bomb us first, so that means infantry are inevitably coming there. You can see that infantry unit, that one. If they get one more, they'll... Yeah, damn. So we just lost a unit there. Good thing we shifted some reinforcements north. Which, depending on if they fill those gaps... Oh, they do. Darn, I was hoping they wouldn't. If they hadn't filled the gaps, I would have had the ability to attack that French unit from three sides. Well, as it is, I might be able to actually. I could shift a unit down toward Ru Rouen. See what the Serbs do here. I wonder if the loss of Belgrade's got... Nope. Hypothesizing maybe the loss of Belgrade would that make them more cautious, but that does not appear to be the case. Okay, so the British are on the offensive down there. It looks like they've got a pretty strong force, more than just one unit, so I'm glad I didn't just decide to go gangbusters and attack. British Expeditionary Force is finally going to maybe get involved in the war and stop getting killed on their ships. Maybe. Okay, so that's going to be the end of the turn. So we're going to go ahead and end that here. I think, you know, in uh, in the Western or in the Western Front or Eastern Front, sorry, things are still fluid. It's hard to tell what's going on. You can see here that the Russians in Krakow are encircled, um, and that definitely is going to impact their ability to defend. They've only been encircled one turn, though, so um, we're probably going to leave them there one more turn just to get as cheap of a victory over them as possible. Well, that assumes we maintain our, our foothold there. The guys in Belgrade are uh, dug in, and uh, they successfully held off against a Serbian attack last round. I may have to start pulling some of these guys out, though, because I've got another one of my troops here in kind of somewhat of a salient, which is... Never good. Um, I'd rather have the enemy in a salient, which I kind of do, but I don't have the... Can this guy bombard? I could bombard that guy. What about a battleship? I could do that with him, too. My concern would be where the rest of the fleet, the Allied fleet is. Anyway, we'll see what we do next turn. Um, but uh, that's going to do it for this video, guys. The Western Front is starting to stagnate, but there's a little bit of a bulge. There may be one last opportunity. If we swing this unit here, we might be able to overwhelm this one this one French unit. I don't know if my Zeppelin can find him. Yes, range of the Zeppelin, not of the 
artillery battery, unfortunately, but nonetheless, um, I may still have an opportunity, it's hard to tell at this point, um, to drive on Paris. If I do, I will certainly take it. Uh, we destroyed a French infantry unit last turn, but then they destroyed one of our own in their counterattack, so everything kind of ended up about even. But that's enough of me talking here. I appreciate you tuning in for this video, and until the next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, uh, and I'm out.